Hello and welcome to End on a Make, where tonight I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Marvel NBA ESPN Arena of Heroes broadcast, which I think is what they ended up calling it. They announced it a couple weeks back, put everything into motion really quickly, and essentially it was just an alternative broadcast that uh, featured a special Marvel narrative. So Disney wanted that brand synergy, they own ESPN, they own Marvel, so it makes sense that way, I can see why they did it. And so what they did was they had on ESPN, they had the regular Warriors Pelicans matchup. And then on ESPN 2, they had this alternate broadcast that had Ryan Rucco and Richard Jefferson on the call. And then also had Angelique Roche or Roche. I'm sorry if I'm getting that wrong, who was basically like the color commentary, but for Marvel. Like she was like the Marvel person where Richard Jefferson would be like the player analysis. And so what they did was they had three players from both teams that were selected by different heroes to represent them. And they won these these things. They earned these things called hero points that were it was essentially fantasy basketball, but with Marvel and for a television broadcast and like a little through narrative where whoever from the two teams, whichever person had the most hero points by the end of the game, they would be declared the winner and they would get to work alongside the Avengers or something. A very, very convoluted, but you know, it's a good it's a good idea to do something like this for the kids. And that's what everyone kept saying was, you know, this was this is something to get kids that love these superheroes into basketball. And I have to say, watching this whole broadcast I was kinda hyped. I was like the Nickelodeon wildcard NFL game with the slime zone and all that was was pretty awesome like I really did enjoy that I found that pretty entertaining compared to you know what a traditional NFL broadcast is and this was kind of similar and I think a large part of why I enjoyed this so much is because they had they had announcers that cared so Richard Jefferson and and Ryan Rucco were both they just came off as huge Marvel nerds. Ruko was making references and pulling quotes from every Marvel movie he could think of after basically every play. And RJ just couldn't contain his excitement. And then you had Angelique there, who was holding it down, giving out trivia that kind of tied into Marvel and basketball. And they just, they, you know, they carried the broadcast along very well. They interviewed Anthony Mackie a bit in the second quarter, and that was really cool because... You know, he just got named Captain America. And so all in all, it, it's just, you know, you could tell they really put a lot of thought into how this broadcast was going to go. You could tell that they really cared about getting it right. And I think it's really cool. I think it's cool of these sports leagues to try something different. Um, I try to not be the jaded sports fan who's like, yeah, they just want more money. I, I try to think of it. I don't remember who said it, but someone said, you know, on the broadcast, they said, so if you like Iron Man, you want Lonzo Ball to do well. If you like Black Panther, you want Andrew Wiggins to do well. If you want, if you like Captain Marvel, then you want Steph to do well. And like, that's a really cool way to get someone that may not be into basketball into a player. And the way, you know, sports fandom has been moving is it seems like, you know, people will have their team. But they'll have more than that. They'll have the players that they really, truly enjoy watching. And so to get to watch something like this where they have, you know, the crazy effects and logos after every shot and someone throws the ball cross court and there's like smoke or lasers or something coming off of it. Steph would hit threes and there would be the huge Captain Marvel logo. Uh, Andrew Wiggins had the little Black Panther head every time he scored and like. You could tell that they just really wanted it to be a fun, lighthearted broadcast, and that's exactly what it was. They had a couple moments where you would have these computer-generated versions of the characters, like, sitting in the rafters. Like, at one point, Iron Man, they just cut to a, a computer animation of Iron Man sitting in the rafters. Like, he was, like, WCW-era Sting, just by himself above the arena. And then they had a couple where, like, him and Captain Marvel would be sitting on top of, like the time the clock above the the backboard for free throws like you could tell they just wanted to get clever with it and be and, and just have fun and kind of see if they can get kids excited about basketball or i mean that's what they said 
I don't know how many people watched it like I did just for novelty effect. I don't know. You know, I doubt ESPN, ESPN will ever be like, yeah, nine million kids watched this. Um, so, I mean, I guess the way to know if it was successful will be to see how fast they do it again and in what capacity. And it also makes some sense, too, because Marvel this morning dropped a surprise like phase four trailer that showcased all of the upcoming movies and a lot of the release dates and titles and stuff. So that excitement was there, and I couldn't figure out why they would have done that on a random Monday morning. Then, as it got closer to this broadcast, and I started seeing all of the thought that had gone into it. I was like, oh, I'm an idiot for not realizing that they knew they were going to be able to, you know, hold own the conversation today. Uh, the one thing I will say that I did not, <laughs> did not um, enjoy, and it's got nothing to do with, with the game itself, but I feel bad for Lonzo Ball. Because there was a point in the at the near the end of the first quarter where they pulled all the hero points up for everyone, and the man had negative one point, and that was and I think he ended up finishing the game with like five hero points, while everyone else had thirty, twenty five, twenty, you know, and it just it's not a good look. And yes, he had a bad game, but people are gonna see that and be like, "Wow, this dude really only had one." Like it just looks so much worse. And I understand that, that, you know, that's the risk of the game. I'm, I'm sure ESPN execs were terrified that Steph was going to go shoot four for 17 from three or something. Instead, he drops 41. We get a insane triple-double from Draymond Green, who ends up taking the, the top spot. He won the Hero Points Award Challenge. I don't even know what they called it. Um... <laughs> But it was overall, it was a fun broadcast. And, you know, I know I wasn't the intended target, the primary target, but I watched it and I enjoyed it. And I, I appreciate that they're trying these things to get fans engaged, because I think especially in a in a full 82 game season, I think you get a lot of a lot of fans, a lot of more casual fans that are kind of like, OK, I'm over it, like call me when the playoffs start. I don't need to see another random March game, another random February game. So to try different things like this, whether it's, you know, weird graphics and some like through line type of fantasy element, or if it's switching up the announcers or if it's anything else that they that they want to try to do. Like, I appreciate the league trying to come up with with new means and new new ways to kind of keep it fresh. And, you know, it's not always going to work. It's, you know, it's we'll see what happens with the playing tournament. I think that could be something that ends up sticking around a long time, too. It's but it's that flexibility and that willingness to try new things to to appeal to a broader audience that's going to hopefully and eventually lead to bigger and better developments for the league. Like if this Marvel idea doesn't stick and they go back to the drawing board, maybe the next idea that incorporates something like this is 10 times better. I just I appreciate that they're putting in the effort to make something different and to and to try new things. So on that end, I think it's a pretty big success. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, if I was a sports fan that didn't know about heroes, I certainly learned a lot about heroes today. And if I'm a kid or a fan of, of Marvel properties that isn't really big on sports, then, you know, I got to see a fun, entertaining game. I got to see Steph Curry go for 41. I got to see Zion have a good game. I got to see the the Pelicans try to come back. Like it was a it was all in all I think it's a big win for the NBA and I'm really interested to see what what they do going forward with it. Uh please in the comments let me know what you thought of this game. If you if you loved it, if you hated it, if it took you out, if you couldn't take it serious, uh, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Please drop it in the comments or you can find me on Twitter. I will uh, put my link in the description. Uh, and yeah, just just please let me know what you think, because I'd, I'd love to hear different opinions on this. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon.